I don't know why it just shut off. That doesn't make any sense. All right, that's fine. All right, so we're back for another constant opinion. Liege is here for the first time in man, seven months. I'm getting to do this show. I, I'm very, very excited about this. Wow. Yeah, I have a guest today. Um, it is Bianca Jordan. Hi. Uh, none of the normal people who are who would be on the show are here today. Uh, no intern. She's at work. Show is working. Grimace is in Florida. I don't know where he's at. McBride, I'm hoping, is going to call in. And The Gaff, which we all love The Gaff. I'm hoping he calls in as well. I uh, don't really know if he's going to. So, being that Bianca Jordan's never listened to this show, uh, she might have been bits and pieces. I uh, heard the Are You Smarter heard some of it. Are You Smarter Than a Hooter Girl, things like that. I'll mm-hmm. just give a um, brief description of what our show does. Um, luckily enough, we're, we're able to use uh, a, a studio for Zeno Radio today uh, on RadioSherry.com. We are hopefully going to be able to get a show started here in the next couple weeks on Mondays. Uh, I'm filling in for Waitress Radio today with Francesca. Ooh. Uh, she is on vacation for a couple weeks. Must be nice. I actually get to go on a lot of vacations. So I really yeah, so you should be quiet. Very miniature vacations. They're two or three days. Vacations but nonetheless. That is true. Now, this show we started, uh, actually Mendel, uh, a a friend of mine from down in Florida, he's uh, another manager. He, uh, We started doing a show where we did nothing but make fun of current events, talk about wrestling, sports, things like that. Uh, it's something I wanted, <clears throat> wanted to do for a very long time. And I finally got to do it. Started it with the gaff and Mendel. It turned into kind of a shit show. A lot of talking, a lot of problems, things like that. Uh, we would bring people on, make fun of them. We would do too many shots of fireball. That's pretty much how our show went. It was just strictly, uh, it was a disaster. There were two or three shows where we actually couldn't even speak by the end of the show. Classy. Very classy. But we've since changed that. Once McBride came on the show and the gas left, we had another kind of, I guess classy is a good word, but we kind of had a different idea of how the show was going to go. We uh, had a little more structure. Instead of being hour and a half shows where it was just a drink fest and things like that, it turned into uh 45, 50-minute shows where we actually talked about stuff, moved from topic to topic and things like that. So we're going to try to keep it exactly the same. Okay. I've got like four four or five little topics today. Uh, again, hoping these guys call in. If not, I'm going to have to call them. Uh, it's uh, not for this show, but for a future show we're going to talk about. Um, I've got a five, six pages of just sex-related stuff. Well. Wow. Yeah, no, we're not going to talk about that today, though. That, that's not today. That'll be, that'll be for another day. Um, so, yeah, I oh, speaking of which, Batman may call it. I'm not sure if you know who Batman is. He's a uh, a fellow employee. Yeah, yeah, he may uh, he may take a few minutes off work and call in today. He, oh. He's very excited. He thought it was yesterday, but yesterday, instead, instead of doing that, I got to catch one fish, uh, a flounder. That mm. was unkeepable. So. Wow. Yeah. So normally how we start the show is we do what's new with you. So would you like to go first? Everything is new with you. Everything is new with me. Um, I am working on a lot of home improvement things. That's new with me. Home improvement. Home improvement. Improving my apartment. I am working like a crazy person. Planning for a real vacation because I don't get to go on vacations every month like you. Miniature vacation. When you go on vacation, though, you go for weeks and weeks. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. You go for a week. Oh, you're going for a work function to Vegas. That will not be a vacation. <laughs> okay. So if you include work meetings and conferences, a vacation, you're out of your mind. You actually. Got to go on a vacation in January, I believe, and again in April? You're right, I did. I, I got to go to the, uh, for the intern's 21st birthday, I got to go to Vegas. Okay, so those are vacations. And then in April, back to Florida. Okay, uh, another vacation. With the intern. Right. Mm-hmm. So I had done none of those things in over a year, so that's why. Been to Atlantic City a couple times, that's mm-hmm. always fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, planning on a, well, I'm going to a wedding, you know. Well, this sure. isn't about me. This is about you. Right. I'm just saying, that's why I said I don't get to go on those vacations. Okay. So what else am I doing? Other than that, my good friend is coming in town today to cut up the city with me. Um, she goes by the name Renee. So we'll have a good time. Do a little Central Park. I have to work, unfortunately, work on a big project this weekend. So she'll help me out with that. And It's all about time management. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it is all about time management. That's one of those hot button words that just sends sends the fire within my veins. But so yeah, so that's what's new with me. Um, what's new with you? Well, what's new with me? It's been seven months since I've done the show. Like I said, uh, a lot is new. Um, living in New York City. Uh, part of the reason I haven't been able to do the show is because the majority of the people that I did it with aren't here, uh, other than the intern. And just doing a show with the intern and I would be. Uh, a little rough. I'm actually going to say something for a time she comes on. I'll tell you about it. She, uh, we went out of Sheep's Head Bay to go fishing. She goes, that's a lake, right? And I go, no, it's Sheep's Head Bay. Bays lead out to an ocean or a, a larger body of water. She said there is no difference between a bay and a lake. So we're going to save that for her because I want her to try to be able to defend herself. But that's no. that's that Pasco County education. Oh, it is. no, it really is. I, I mean, I went to school in Pinellas, so it's you know it's not the same. Wow, well, you you're rough. You yeah. and you and one guy <laughs> about so your the lead operator. Lead operator with your Pasco County jokes. Yeah, it's well, I, I used to work at, at the Pasco County store, so that's part of the reason why he makes fun of me for that. Um, so let's see, Dun Vegas, like you said. Went to Atlantic City. I'm mad about Atlantic City because after going to Vegas, going to Atlantic City is like going to a a carnival ball, versus like, Six Flags. That was a good one. I was going to say a ball pit at a McDonald's rather than you know an actual playground. You don't want to go in the ball pits. Needles, vomit, stuff like that underneath. We've done that on a previous show. Yeah. It's well, not good. I mean, I'm an adult, so I don't do that anyway. But I think it'd be a lot of fun. I think it'd be fun. Now. Speaking of which, to find other shows from us, you can just look up online Consummate Opinion. It's on uh, YouTube. So just uh, Consummate Opinion, type that in. Uh, you could, it also links up to the Facebook page, Twitter page. I think we have an Instagram that I don't even use. I don't, I'm don't. i not a big Instagram fan, so not really down with that. Hmm. Uh, what about the Snapchat? I don't do Snapchat. I just, I don't know, taking pictures and sending it to people to justify whatever I'm doing, I just don't see that as, as reason to do that at all. My opinion, though, at least. My opinion. Um, also, feel free to call in at 605-477-3037. You have to hit 5. Otherwise, it won't get you on the queue. You have to hit 5. Um, oh, that's another thing. I asked her about a queue, and she had no idea. She goes, well, no, it's just a waiting line. I go, well, no, at Disney, we stand in queues. And we don't stand in queues. We stand in lines. I go, a line is the same as a queue. <laughs> Sometimes with the intern, it's a little bit of a struggle. But, uh, no, it's not. You, know, you need a little more patience with the intern. Yeah. So, let's see what else is new with me. Um, we're really trying to do this on uh, on Radio Sherry, trying to get a show on Mondays. I have to talk with the uh, lead operator, make sure I can make that work, um, so I can work nights every Monday and then uh, do this on Monday afternoons. Uh, it should be pretty cool. I think you can make that happen. It should be cool. And what I find really interesting is the fact that you can listen to this not only over the phone, which is really cool. I I never got a breakdown like we got before this, and how you can listen to you can listen to radio stations from other countries and things like that. You know, if you just dial in a number, that's really really cool. You can also listen online, but you have to have Google Chrome. If you don't use Google Chrome, you cannot listen to it on RadioSherry.com. So, that being said, you said you're doing some uh, house house uh, improvements and things like that. So, what was the little stunt? I fell asleep last night. I went I went on a fishing trip. Then, I went, then we went to the beach. Very nice. It was supposed to rain all day yesterday, and it didn't. It was, it was beautiful. rough waters yesterday. But then uh went to the beach, and uh, I ended up falling asleep about 6 o'clock, 6, 6 <laughs> I woke up this morning at 7.45, 8 o'clock. That's a nice life. I, finally, I needed it really bad. But I had 54 messages on my phone <laughs> from, from many people, many. But uh, I got some pictures. It was very, very interesting. Um, so what... What ended up happening with that? Because I've been thrown under the bus about my, uh, I guess. Carpenter skills? Yeah, carpentry skills, I guess, would be a good word. And I think I did a good job, but. Uh, you did a sensational job. Well, my home improvement projects pretty much are very simple, but I'm just not the most handy person in the world. I'll be honest. That is not one of the gifts that the Lord gave me. So I usually rely on my friends and my, my coworkers and things like that or you know, somebody I have to pay, but I prefer not to do that because then I can spend more money on shoes if I don't do that. So basically... You never have enough shoes, right? No, you not. Enough. Nope. Shoes or underwear. You're always going to need them. 
Exactly. So basically, I ordered a very small, like, nightstand from Ikea to hold makeup, and I also ordered a bookcase, which, in my opinion, a monkey could put together. <laughs> um, and I gave the project – I needed help, or I thought I needed help, and I gave the project to – lead operator and lead operator I gave the bookcase because I figured he needed something because he's not the most handy person but the excuses that he makes for these things literally drive me bonkers because instead of just saying this is not something I can do or I don't want to do it he makes it seem as if it's your fault initially he tried to put blinds up in my house and he told me that the dexterity in his thumbs wouldn't allow him to be able to do it and I didn't have the proper tools this time he went to put the bookcase together and was like, I can't put this together. It doesn't have all the tools, <laughs> all the screws and parts. So this is automatically sabotaged. And I'm just like, okay, I'll put that together. That's fine. And then I'm working on it and I'm just like busting it out. I'm putting together this bookcase. And so he chose something that was a little more difficult. However, there were no words to the directions. It was simply pictures. So I figured it would be okay. Halfway through, he told me it's a spatial issue and this is another <laughs> thing and he can't do it and immediately went to bed at about 8 o'clock. But prior to that, told me to call you. Where are you? Because you can come over here because he's not going to take two hours to put together a desk like you did because he took two hours to do absolutely nothing. He messed it all up. I had to take it completely apart and put it together. And I did. I put both pieces of furniture together and by myself. 20 minutes for the bookcase, maybe about 45 minutes for what he did because he had done it wrong. So I had to take it apart and, and then put it together. Do it twice. Yeah. Typically, that's, that's kind of our lives. Whenever he's involved with certain things, I have to work twice as hard for the same result. Had, had I been awake, I would have been there to help out. I, I know you would have. I know you would have. But it was just funny because you got thrown under the, uh, the bus when he shouldn't even be on the bus. So <laughs> it's just very... That's not one of his gifts, and I think he got frustrated, and that's why he went to sleep. But he legit messed it up. And I'm like, what did he do? He did everything backwards and had to take everything apart and then put it all together. And, you know, he's, he's, he's in a very good mood today. I saw him and uh, – Well, he slept for 13 hours. Uh, he looks like he got a haircut. That is also the benefit of living with a vain person. Did you cut his hair? No, but I oh. made sure it got cut. The lead operator is uh, Bianca George's roommate for the next four days. 48 hours. <laughs> oh, is it? That? Oh, yeah. It's almost June 1st. Yeah. yeah. Um, when the clock strikes 12. Yeah, it's been a rocky relationship. Oh. Uh, <laughs> waking up in the middle of the night, sleepwalking, pouring water on shoes, yeah. things like that. It's, it's yeah. been a rocky relationship, but yeah. it's, made, it's made you both better, right? I was already good. Well, yeah. <laughs> made our relationship in, in, better. Yeah, major, it's probably made your relationship better. Probably has. Has right? it? Well, he probably struggle and strife. I will be honest. He probably hates me because <laughs> of, I terrorize him because he is known as a squad kebab, and I will not allow that in my house. So if I have to put up with it at work, it's magnified to be the direct opposite at home. So exactly. he's had to clean up after himself probably a little more than he would normally do. And every day I tell him to count down. <laughs> because I find a habit of his that it literally drives me crazy. And, you know, he has a very good heart. And if the shoe was on the other foot, he would do the same thing for me. So people always ask, why on earth would you offer your home? It's because, A, because I believe in helping people, and B, because you just never know. The same people that you diss on the way up, you have to fall on when you come down. So exactly. I just think that that was whatever. But he's almost been your roommate and intern's roommate. At least three out of the eight nights he said. <laughs> yeah, intern has clearly said that uh, she would not be uh, very welcoming. But no. I, I was like, you just have to, you have to just deal with it. Yeah, I wouldn't put him out unless there was an extreme violation of the rules. But he did not pay attention to the rules as thoroughly as he could have in his orientation, and as a result, that's caused a little strife. You got to pay attention in orientation. Now. I don't know if I'd be able to follow those rules, though. There's a lot of rules there. How do you know there's a lot of rules? Well, he was telling me that, <laughs> how tight of a shift you run. And what did he say the rules were? Uh, to not uh, walk with your shoes on. Which I don't do anyway, so I guess that Okay, so you would be okay. What else? Uh, to clean up after yourself. Which I do, so that's fine. Okay. But I think the most difficult part for me would be the whole, like, the setup. I, I wouldn't want to be out. I wouldn't want to do anything. I would come. I would try to beat you home. 
because I wouldn't want to bother you in your sleep and things like that. But that's not one of the rules. Well, he kind of made it seem like that might be one of the rules. That is not one of the rules. Like, He's a liar. Him. He's a liar. That's well, also strike three for him. He doesn't tell the truth. He exaggerates mildly and sometimes wildly. He does wake me up, but he wakes me up when he snores and doesn't close the door. Like, yeah, he, no, I get it. He's full of crap. I get it. Right, I've so been a very gracious host to him. I, I can imagine. I can imagine. So what we're going to do is we're going to we'll, – we'll get to our first little topic here. Let's uh, do it. Yeah, let's do that. It's uh, Florida Man. We talked about this last week, actually, on the wait, a Waitress Radio. Uh, Florida Man turns himself in for killing his imaginary friend. Okay. Definitely a true story. Uh, this is a picture of the guy. Of course, whatever oh, I have, I couldn't, looks sad. I couldn't put it in last week because I didn't have any access to anything, but I'll get this up on the website today. Um, Jeff Gaylord, 37, uh, actually turned himself in for killing his imaginary friend. The imaginary friend's name is Mr. Happy. Mm. Um, he told officers that he stabbed him repeatedly, cut him up with a hatchet, and then buried him in the backyard. Okay. So if, as you go on reading this article, it talks about how uh, Mr. Happy's progressively gotten dirtier in the house, not <laughs> cleaned up, things like that. It was a good segue with uh, lead operator. Not is he, picking up from is it really lead operator? Or is it Mr. Happy? <laughs> <laughs> it could be Mr. Happy. Um, but he, um, it came down to the point to where he, uh, uh, apparently Mr. Happy got a DUI in this oh. guy's car. Oh. They went out for dinner. They went to a Hooters, actually. And uh, they went out to dinner. They left. And at some point on the way home, they... Oh, they were celebrating Mr. Happy's birthday. Let me put it that way. The imaginary friend's birthday was being celebrated. Did they sing to him? I think they sing at Hooters for your birthday. Uh, yeah, they do. But at that point, can you imagine singing to this, an invisible seat? I don't know if that would be something that... I, I don't think that's very believable. In that Better than singing to a rude person. I could see that. I could see that. So Mr. Happy got a DUI after he crashed his car after this birthday celebration. Mr. Happy took off and got this guy, Jeff Gaylord, got him stuck with the DUI when it should have been Mr. Happy's DUI. What? Yeah, I I mean... He, so was Mr. Happy sitting on Jeff Gaylord's lap when he got the DUI? Uh, no, he was in the passenger seat at the time, but then made his way to the, the driver's seat when Mr. Happy took off. Um, yeah, you know how that goes. So at this point... He was finally fed up after not cleaning up. Just they becoming they were becoming distant, and so he decided to kill him. This was the last straw. So this is this is his quote: "What he said: the drunk driving incident I got unfairly blamed for, and just how messy he had become put me over the edge, and I murdered him. It was an overreaction. I should have listened to the neighbor lady and got us into counseling, but no, I did the unthinkable and killed my best friend. I'm a terrible, terrible person and need to be punished." So he goes on to going into the police station and asking for the death penalty immediately. He wanted it done on site. That obviously didn't work. They're like, sir, you've done nothing legally wrong. We can't, you know, do anything. So he threatens the cops to kill them. Which yeah. then that gets you put in jail. So then they go to his house. And if they don't find any body, <laughs> of course, because of an imaginary friend, but what they do find is a bunch of drug paraphernalia and weapons. Uh -huh. He had a machine gun. What? So he was a legitimately crazy person. He actually was. Legitimately nuts. But uh, so before we continue with that, I got a text from Shell, someone who used to be on the show. Um, he said he's listening, but he's not going to call any at work. Oh. Yeah. I mean, he's got a good job. I don't want to get so. in trouble. Um, what Shell is known for is having, uh, which we're actually going to talk about later on, having something of his that's only four inches. That's what he's known for. And one of his quotes to me years ago, we've known each other for a long time, was that it doesn't matter if it's as wide as a Coke can. <laughs> That's, he loves it. He loves it a lot. Hopefully he's listening now to hear that because it's been seven months in the, since I've been able to make a joke about that. So what, what we would do every time we hear on the show the word for, we would say for anything, we would mention him. Sometimes he's been on, sometimes he hasn't. But he, uh, he would really appreciate that. Um, what, uh, if I was in that guy's position killing my imaginary friend, I don't know if I would go to the police and ask for a, uh, death penalty. A death penalty. But if you're already that crazy, why not request that death penalty and instant death? 
I guess, would be a good way to put it. I mean, you're already nuts. You killed your imaginary friend. Your friend got a DUI, but you got stuck with it. So why not, like, why? Why what? I don't know. It kind of reminds me of Bates Motel. I watch Bates Motel all the time. Uh, we're finally done with season three. Fantastic. I don't know. Uh, it's just a, it's a, a TV show based off the movie Psycho, basically, yeah. and him as a child. And that kid is nuts. Like, literally nuts. And he is actually crazy. You, you know that that's uh -huh. not real. Oh, McBride just sent me a text. Did he cut his body into four pieces? <laughs> oh, that's the best. <laughs> oh, man. You got to call oh. in, man. You got to call in. These uh, are great jokes. Yeah, and that's, it's always been that way with show. So, uh, he, he really appreciates it. We've sent each other some really lewd pictures before. I guess lewd would be a good word. Mm -hmm. um, Has four letters. Oh, wow. <laughs> Burn on show. I love it. <laughs> you told me oh. to do this. Man, I'm trying to get McBride to call in. And uh, so Bates up. he's crazy. Oh, he said, oh, wow. Yeah, see, he's listening right away. I love it. Got to call in, man. Got to hit five and call in. You can be, you can be in on this. Not going to, uh, only going to be on for about another 25 minutes or so. So it's not that bad. We're halfway through. Yeah. It goes by quick. That's one thing I've noticed. We've been stuck with shows where it's been an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes, and we're doing quizzes, we're doing things like that. And is it really been an hour and 20 minutes? And then we have to go to our wrap up and things like that. And it's just time goes by fast when this happens. Time um, flies when you're having fun. It is. It is a lot of fun. And that's another thing we do on the show for, obviously, no one and, and Miss Bianca Jordan hasn't listened either. We do a lot of quizzes, whether it be those Are You Smarter Than the Hooter Girl quiz, which when we do those, we have um, the intern, who is a former Hooters girl. Yeah, you're kind of obsessed with Hooters, I see. Yeah, well, I, I'm there very frequently. Oh, oh okay. Um, One of those. We have... Uh, we have some girls who currently work at Hooters, and then we have uh, girls who've never worked at Hooters. And actually, intern wins just about every time hmm. when we do those quizzes. Now, the winner gets to choose who gets shot with the electric tennis racket. Uh, we've got one of those little bug zapping tennis rackets, and you get zapped with it. Some of them don't really like it. Some do. Um, and that's usually, and I didn't bring it today. I should have. I'm really mad about that. Normally, your first who time on the show. you zap me? Normally, your first <laughs> time on the show, you have to touch your electric tennis racket while you're doing what's new with you. <laughs> well uh, Show says I want tennis racket zapper to her nipple <laughs> For who? Uh, um, apparently you Me? I, we don't have a show, sorry <laughs> um, But the intern actually The first time she uh, she did it She lost And she got it to her nipple One of the other girls did it straight to her nipple Oh wow, that sounds exciting Yeah so, sure, you got all this time to listen and send me texts, but you can't call in, huh? Oh, He's boy. scared. He is scared. Well, McBride should be calling, and so should the guest, so that's good. So we'll get on to the next one here. Well, we didn't even... You just said that he should kill himself, or he should get the death penalty. What were you saying? Well, no, how he... No, then he told the cops that he wanted to kill them. So now what's out. happening then? Well, no, now, now we're in that kind of... Uh, we're in that limbo period. This is just a... Uh, I try to make current events. This is relatively current. It is May 12th, so we're like two weeks ago. Oh, okay. So, I mean, I could probably find an update, but I haven't done that yet. I actually have some of these current events from probably, man, October, November. I've been saving websites so we could talk about. Uh, and when I say I'm going to do the show, but then I never do. Now I finally am doing it again. Well, but, you should have done this a while ago. You really like doing this. I should have. I should have. Oh, boy. I got a, I got a call-in request. <gasps> do you now? Let's see. How do we do this here? You should know. You got the instructions. All right. I got it right here. Let's see. Who do we have here? Is this the Gap? Oh, you already know. What is up, the Gap? It's been a long time. Let me turn. Let me turn your volume down here. You're 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 breaking my eardrums here. All right. I don't need to get an echo. All right. Hold on a second. Give me one second here. I'm gonna pull it down. Somewhere. How's that? Uh, I think it's better. Oh, All right, yeah. Yeah, it sounds good. So, I got Miss Bianca Jordan on here. Anything you want to say to her? Uh, she sounds very beautiful. Oh, wow. Aww, thank you. Oh, yeah. you know, I was talking to Bianca about this the other day. She actually said that next year is she plans on being married. So, I actually threw your name in the hat there, I guess. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. 
Good luck, man. <laughs> so, uh, how's, how's life with you today? Uh, what are you, are you still in California? Yeah, man, I'm on the West Coast doing it big. Uh, no complaints. Uh, I have to go back to, uh, work in about an hour. So I'm on lunch, lunch right now, so, uh. Oh, spend your lunch break with us, huh? You know, you know, you pick my interest when you, uh, when you mention somebody, uh, murdering cops or something along those lines, or. Yeah, well, did you hear that at the beginning where he, uh, uh, the guy killed his imaginary friend? <laughs> I was, I was hoping you would call in. I wanted to get to that story when you called in because I figured you'd appreciate it. He did what? So the guy in Jacksonville murders his imaginary friend. His name was Mr. Happy. He he stabbed him, cut him up with a hatchet, and then buried him in the backyard. So he turned himself into police and basically said that he wanted the death penalty immediately for killing his imaginary friend. All right. So was he already like institutionalized before he handed himself over to the authorities? No, no, no. This guy was out and about regular citizen of Jacksonville. Wow. All right. So you know my next question. He was white, right? Yeah. <laughs> he was he, he was white, yes. Um, he, oh, it's crazy. That's funny as hell. The wow. Last, the last straw was him. Uh, Mr. Happy got a DUI in his car, and when Mr. Happy fled the scene, the guy had to stick the D, or he got stuck with the DUI. Oh, well, Mr. Happy's a, a very strategic person. This guy is sick, bro. What's wrong with well, I mean, that's... Wow. Back in Jackson, though, that's different. Maybe you should uh, take the tour of the interstate that we did not too long ago. Yeah, yeah. Good times on that interstate, actually. All right, so <laughs> we'll, you'll be on the phone for this next one, then. Now, I mean, I don't smoke. I've actually never smoked a cigarette, so... Me either. Now, you, have you, you've never smoked a cigarette, have you, guys? No. All right, so no, I got one. Cigarette. I got one here for you. Uh, e-cigarettes have... Ten times more cancer-causing ingredients than regular cigarettes. No. That's what it, I mean. It's a, it was Japanese scientists announced e-cigarettes contain ten times the level of cancer-causing carcinogens than its counterparts in the tobacco world. It's the amount of the, the in the formaldehyde that's mm-hmm. the issue. Uh, the liquid form in one brand of e-cigarette, the team found more than ten times the level of carcinogens than one regular cigarette, and especially when the wire, which vaporizes the liquid, gets overheated, higher amounts of those harmful substances seem to be produced. So basically what it's saying is that smoking e-cigarettes are actually worse for you than smoking regular cigarettes. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Disgusting. Disgusting habits. Yeah, I'm not real big on the whole cigarette thing anyway. No, and it's something that I've saved a ton of money from by not doing it. Cause yeah, that's, not, a, that's like, a, like a 200 hour. I had a, I had a roommate that smoked cigarettes, and we broke it down one day. All right, so before I go into the numbers, this uh, individual, if you will, went from three kids, uh, excuse me, zero kids to three kids in like 10 weeks. And oh, yeah, uh, I remember hearing about this, yeah. Yeah, so uh, while he was uh, on Sirius FW, that's Suicide Watch, for those of you that aren't familiar with the uh, terminology, uh, <laughs> we were we were sitting down talking. He's like, you know, if I, if I just start smoking cigarettes, man, I could save about $300 a month. I'm like, oh, well, I mean, I wouldn't think that'd be that hard of a decision. He's like, yeah, well, you know, I got to do me. I'm like, well, if you stop doing other people, you know, you probably do yourself a little better anyway. <laughs> that is very true. That is very true. Actually, I, I made a comment probably years ago and probably two kids ago that um, condoms cost a lot of money. Oh, uh, well, yeah. so, does, so does child oh support. Oh, my God. Child support actually costs a lot more money. I, I would think that that would cost more than condoms. It does. Idiot. It does. <laughs> Well, well, let's just say your let's just say your pullout game is uh, kind of weak. Let's just let's leave it at that. <laughs> well, you got to pull and pray. You can't just pull. Yeah, that's true. I mean, but, but in his defense, sometimes you just kind of get caught up, and it's like, eh, well, you know, it might not work this time. Well, yeah. it's gonna cost you. So. No, it is. It is. You I have. Be a uh, uh, I am a student of his game. You know what I mean? So uh, uh, my pull-out game is very strong. Oh, you learned from his. <laughs> yeah, he learned. He learned from my mistakes. <laughs> I don't know that we should say mistakes. Well, no, I don't mean my, I don't mean mistakes like that. I mean just errors in judgment at the time. Mm, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. That sounds You're, a lot better. Yeah, it does. So, uh, so what are you out in California for when you should be in upstate New York? 
Um, uh, I'm actually working the uh, NCAA uh, rolling championships right now. NCAA bowling. You know, no, bowling. not bowling. Not bowling. Oh, rolling. On a boat. Rowing, row, rowing. Row, row your boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rowing, rowing. I got you. Yeah. So uh, it, it's different. Um, not real well versed on uh, water sports. You know, uh, me and my demographics stand, uh, try to uh, stay on the court or the field. You know what I mean? What, what was that? He didn't I said, oh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I'm going to take a wild guess that in rowing, your demographic's not in there. Uh, there's like five of us out here. Total. Out of how many teams? Uh, D1, 2, and 3. So, like, I don't know, 60, maybe 60 teams? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, uh, man. I am uh, the unicorn that they have never seen before. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got, I got, I got motherfuckers, I got motherfuckers staring at me like, "Oh my God, how did he make it in here?" You know what I mean? It's different. Man. Yeah, I got it's it. Different. First, you know, I gotta say, that's the first time the F word's been used on the show. You know, I figured it would be you that did it. If anybody did it, I figured it'd be you. You know, I'm used to knocking down walls and barriers and all that stuff. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Always entertaining this one. You know, I try. I try to do my best. Oh, well, the show, uh, I don't know if you heard the jokes we had about the show before, um, but uh, one that you missed, uh, McBride wrote on here, but when we were talking about cutting the imaginary friend up, he goes, did he cut his body into four pieces? You know how we always make fun of show and the number four? <laughs> show, show says his connection is bad. Oh, That sucks. Well, maybe if he didn't still have an iPhone 4, maybe we wouldn't have this issue right now. <laughs> oh. Shot fired. Shot fired. Yeah. So um, so when do you plan on coming back to New York City? Uh, I take the red eye in on Sunday, so I'll be there probably Monday morning. To New York City? No, no, no. Well, I don't know. Honestly, I just get on the plane, bro. You know, I just don't show up late. I go, I go where they tell me to be on time, and I don't really care about it. I'm not paying for any of this. I got gotcha. you. Hey, what do yeah, you think what is going like. to happen tonight, Rangers Lightning? I'll just go Tampa Bay all day. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm from, I'm from, that's, that's my hood right there. I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to change what I, what I rep. Not happening. Well, see, I know, I know, I know. For you, you're pulling for the Rangers for like the financial benefits for your business and all that other kind of stuff. Yeah, and which which, which is, is true, but like also we have a we have a Bianca Jordan is a Blackhawks fan. So she's Bianca Jordan the, is from Chicago. Yeah, I mean, for those two teams in the Stanley Cup, that'd be huge. I mean, let's just be real. Uh, I really don't give a damn about hockey, so I'm just gonna root for the home team. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was good. it was actually good that you called in. I. I uh, First time, uh, well, I was on the show last Friday with uh, Francesca on Waitress Radio, which you should listen to that, to Gaff. You would really appreciate that. Uh, okay. Francesca, I'm on it. Waitress stories. Uh, but uh, we couldn't get any call in. There was actually like three or four people that tried to call in, and there was nothing. Like, no, they, for some reason it didn't go through, but you, you came through perfectly. You know, so I, try, I try to rip the home team, help the home boys out. No. Yeah. He's your best bud. Yeah, next time he comes into town, you have to get him on here, for sure. We're going to be doing the, hopefully doing the shows on Mondays. That's the goal for right now, at least. All right, I like you. Yeah, I see, like you. See, uh, McBride just put in here, the Hawks can suck it, and the Lightning are going to thunderfuck the Rangers. Call <laughs> 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 in, man. Press 5. You're listening, you'll be able to hear it the exact same way. Just press 5. Call in. Uh, Boy, man, I got I got to go. I just want to say you sound good on the radio, and they about to feed me, and I'm not turning down free food. So I'll let you boy, all right? Oh, yeah, do me a favor. Send some food this way. I'm pretty hungry. Um, Yeah, I'll FedEx it to you. It'll be there in like four days. Sweet. Perfect. Should be should be fantastic. <laughs> all right, man. Take care. All right. Bye. See you. Bye. That was fantastic. That, that was good. Cool. That was very good. Now, I'm not sure if he hung up, but uh, I pressed the button. I've always wanted to press the button to take somebody off because years ago I used to listen to Bubble Love Sponge. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Yeah. He would just hang up on people and it would be fantastic. 
Like, it was actually really good. It was just hanging up on people? Yeah, being able to, like, well, he would call it, uh, chucking them, well, chucking them to the weeds. You know, that, that's always good stuff. All right, let's get to the next story here. Okay. This one, I don't have, it's more of a video, so I'm going to put it online. But, uh, it's, there were some hidden cameras set up in a uh, subway system, and I believe it was in Colombia or Brazil. It was Brazil. It was a Brazilian program that set this up. They put hidden cameras in the subway system. And what they did was subway took off. Everything was fine. There was no one else on the car, one or two people, all part of this little game. And then it would stop. All the lights would shut off. And then the lights would come back on, and there was people dressed as zombies on the outside of the uh, the car. The zombies would then make their way in, literally terrify these people. I don't know if this was set up and planned in the sense that, because what if you got somebody who was really that scared and had a heart attack? Yeah. That would be a big problem. But I'm going to put this video up online on the uh, the Facebook page and see, but it's um, some people basically gave in. I watched this video, it was probably like a month or two ago. They basically just like laid down on the zombies. <laughs> Other people climbing up, climbing through, like, the railings at the top. It was actually pretty interesting. Wow. Very, very interesting. I don't even know what I would – I would probably just scream and start kicking and punching and fighting. Yeah, it's uh, it's a situation I wouldn't want to be put in. Because I wouldn't know if it was some elaborate way to rob you or harass you or molest you or something like that. I don't, I don't know what that would be. Like, you don't know that that's a joke. <laughs> it's, like, late at night. People think of all – kinds of creative crimes. Now they're like zombie thieves or something. I wouldn't think that that's like a, that wouldn't be funny to me at all. Uh, they, they thought it was pretty good. Uh, it's really funny to watch, but like you said, I wouldn't want to be the one involved in that situation just because it would be, it'd be very concerning, I think. Um, ne- all right, next one here, and this is the one specifically for show. This is perfect. Uh, from the Gothamist, which I, what is that website? Is that a legit website? Is it is it like a blogging type website where anyone can I think contribute? It's in between. Okay. Both of those things. All right. Well, it's from the Gulf, the Gothamist, and it says smallest penis in Brooklyn pageant still searching for small penis. Now, now, so <laughs> I will fly you up here if you join in this pageant. That is this absurd. Is, I, I just gotta. I just got to read this first paragraph. It's happening June 13th at Kings County Saloon in Bushwick, so Mm -hmm. in Brooklyn. The smallest penis in Brooklyn pageant is a few short weeks away, and it looks like the hosts are still in search for eligible (laughs) (laughs) micro-peens. They just put out a blast calling for more exemplary small penises. So now, now's as good of a time as any to get back at that dude who dumped you via Snapchat. Oh. Another reason Snapchat's not a good idea, sending stuff like that. Like, doing any of that, like, like sexting and all that, I've just never been into that at all. Me either. So, they're going to do contestants show off their goods, or lack thereof, through evening wear, swimsuit, and talent portions, and let their personalities, or lack thereof, shine through during the Q&A. This, like, it looks like it's a legitimate thing. There's actually a video online. Uh, What's the prize? What do you win? Really, do you win? Well, no, I don't. I mean, somewhere someone wins, I guess. But no, since there appears to be a shortage of small penises in Brooklyn, somehow they'll be accepting video submissions from around the world this year. Winners win $500, a crown, and sash, and the opportunity to air their literal shortcomings on the Internet. Well, you know what? I knew a girl a few years back, and her preference is really, really small penises. She did not like medium. She did not like, you know, that was her preference. So there's somebody for everybody. Maybe, you know, that's her, this, this, that's her kind of play scenario. Girls like that. Something, this could be almost like a dating type scenario, too. I mean, for she, people like her who yeah, are in for, She was not, I mean, she's very particular about it and all of us are like, you're nuts. And she's just like, no, you're nuts. It's just, I'm just like, okay. She's just very particular about it, refused to do. You know, anybody else, like, once she knew, if you were average, you're done. Like, that's not her that's, thing. That's weird to me. She was a strange for her. But, I mean, that was her That was her thing. That's so funny. wonder if my friend Renee that's coming in town remembers that. She would have been good on the show because she remembers that. I'm sure she does. I got a, I got another one here for you while we're into uh, strange things. Um, this happened in Florida as well. 
have to, have to get in town. stuff in Florida, huh? Florida can be a very strange place. Um, you don't say. Yeah, you have a, you have a really good, you have many good areas where there's, you know, normal people. I don't want to say people are abnormal, but where good neighborhoods, things like that. Like there's a spot actually close to where I was, uh, close to Newport Ritchie, well, in Newport Ritchie, where one side of the street are million-dollar mansions and, and higher, just great neighborhood. The other side of the street is called Moon Lake. Moon Lake had, like, voodoo stuff, uh, like witch doctors, uh, KKK. It was this area filled with nothing but just garbage. There was a, a guy who – I got to take a Moon Lake tour – which somebody who lived on the other side of the street goes, oh, yeah, I take people through here all the time. It's a lot of fun. You actually go and see a lot of this different stuff, like the, the voodoo side. There were dolls on trees with, like, stakes through them and things like that. And then the house next door to them had a um, almost like an MMA, like a, an octagon built in in the tree, kind of like a tree house, but it was a fighting ring. <laughs> and it's, just, it's a very, very odd place. And uh, so Florida has its good and bad. There's a lot of bad, though. Any any bad stories you hear, first place you think of, Florida. I do, at least. Right? That's why Imaginary Frame, I didn't even have to see Florida, because it, it the original thing I saw, the original website I saw didn't have Florida Man. It just said, man kills imaginary friend, turns himself in. So I look, and I go, this guy has to be in, like, Polk County, Florida. And no, it wasn't Polk County, but it was in Jacksonville. <laughs> you don't normally see stuff like that from Jacksonville. No? No, not really. But out of Brooksville... Got teen caught making love to stuffed horse in Walmart. Oh, come on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's true stuff. It's insane. Uh, the smoking gun reports 19-year-old Sean Johnson went to the store's comforter section and used the toy to masturbate before placing it back on the shelf among the other items. Oh, items. that's just gross. He left the store and was promptly arrested in the parking lot. Now, can you imagine being the person who goes in there and getting that stuffed horse after the fact? You're just trying to buy a nice gift for somebody. Of course, really, is a nice gift. But no. I'm wondering what kind of horse it was, whether it was one of those like small horses or one of those really, you know, those huge horses you can lay on. They have. I saw them at F.A. Schwartz. They're like, you can buy these huge bears, dogs, horses. Right, but Patrick is the big dog at F.A. Schwartz. But, oh. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I didn't know his name. <laughs> it was a huge deal back in the day when I was, like, in college. Guys would buy Patrick's for girls. That was their thing. Big dogs, was. really? Stuff that, like the friend flowers and stuff like that. I could see the flowers and maybe like a, maybe, not a stuffed animal, but maybe like a bear or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that was the bear. You can get Patrick in all different sizes. So. But yeah, they have they have that one huge one that when I saw this story, I was like, yeah, I wonder if it was this big. That just be, that just, it's just nasty. The whole thing is just nasty. It makes me never want to touch anything. That's why. That's why there's a no shoe rule, wash your hands before you touch anything in my house. <laughs> well, it's, and it's at Walmart. There's no Walmarts around here. So you no. don't have to worry about that. There's Target. And I need to go to Target, actually. One of these Kmart. Time. There's a Kmart. We're actually right by a Kmart right now. Yeah. Kmart has some sketchy stuff going on it, too. Yeah, but, I mean, where else can you get paper towel in, like, abundance? Target. I, Target's not closest to where I live. Neither is Kmart. Yeah, it's close to where I'm at, so it's easier to go get the stuff, and then just yeah. my train ride is very short. Yeah, like my show. Um, <laughs> and so it's really too bad you didn't get to call in, because I would have loved having this conversation with you on the show. Um, let's see. So I think we're about done for the day. We are. Yeah, we're we're pretty close. But what uh, my oh. goal, my goal is to make this a – a weekly thing, and hopefully on Mondays. And what is this? McBride said something about huge deal. Opposite of show, I'm not really sure what he was saying huge deal about. Um, but we uh, trying to get them set up. McBride's in school; it's very difficult mm -hmm. for him to be on a lot uh, with the gas work schedule, the interns work schedule, which is doing such a great job at work. I'm actually going to go see her after this. Oh, you know. Yeah, she's going to take her lunch break right around uh, 3. And okay. I'm going to go there, spend a little bit of time. Some quality relationship time. Oh. Isn't that nice? That is amazing. Um, oh, completely separate. I uh, talked to the people who are renting my house down in Florida. Okay. And I asked them, like, hey, you like the place so bad. Why don't you just buy it? What? Yeah. Why are you trying to sell that? 
intern hates the house because it has passed with me in it. Like mm. my ex-wife lived in it, you know, all that. So um, she's always wanted a different place. Okay. So that's the reason why. Okay. Not, be, not because we're going to stay here forever, but because she doesn't want, loves the house. It's been completely redone and all that, so it's been good. But um, I talked to them, and it has to be at least what my loan is, just because I'm not trying to lose money on it more than I am every month. I uh, Even my insurance went up, I'm now actually paying to use my own house now, even though I'm not there. So that's fantastic. Well. Yeah, can't, can't win them all. But, uh, but, yeah, so hoping to do this on uh, RadioSherry.com. And, of course, you can listen now uh, with Google Chrome. It has a little player that pops up. But if you're on the Firefox Internet Explorer, it doesn't do that. Uh, also, we're going to uh, be putting up all the websites on our own Facebook page, Constant Opinion, and which will then lead to the Twitter page. Like I said, we have an Instagram page that we don't use. And we'll just be tagging different stuff. And, of course, when we find out exactly what we're doing show-wise, we will let you know. Do you have any, anything else to say before you go? No, this is a lot of fun. I, I like it. It's a little chilly in here. You know, the last time I was in here, I went to work sweating. It was very, very warm in here. Hmm. Uh, Francesca said the same, and so did... Uh, well, that AC says it's about 60 in here. The AC was not on last time. <laughs> uh, You're was, pretty tall. You can reach up there and touch it? I Not my stuff. I'm not touching it. Ah. It's just easier that way. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, we'll... Uh, We'll see you around next time. All right.